Well, welcome to Christian Answers. This is Pastor Jeff Short, your Bible teacher and cultural analyst. And today we're going to continue analyzing Melania Trump's new book, her memoirs, where she reveals that she's actually pro-abortion in contradiction to her husband's political stand. So there is not harmony in that family <clears throat> on this great moral issue. And last week I talked about this article that appeared in The Guardian where it outlines Melania Trump's view on abortion. And it's really pathetic and disgusting, her thoughts on abortion. It's basically abortion at any point. Um, and, it, and it takes a very radical, almost it's about as pro-abortion as you can get. And so let me continue on with that article and just comment on it because it's so pathetic, it's so disgusting that it's disappointing to see the first lady, the former first lady, possibly the first lady to be uh, talking about abortion. Just wish that she would keep her opinions to herself, especially when her husband's trying to run for president, and not interject herself into this issue because this is something very, very important. And it's very disappointing to see this kind of controversy and conflict and division right within the so-called conservative movement. Uh, this is her uh, summary of the book. It says, saying, um, all right, it says, um, okay, saying timing matters, Melania Trump also defends the right to abortion later in pregnancy. So we're talking about late-term abortions. She, she says, hey, it's okay for a woman to decide to abort her baby even late-term. This is a radical view of abortion. This is not just, well, I'm in favor of it in certain cases. No, this is full-blown pro-death, pro-abortion, culture of death thinking here. She writes, it is important to note that historically, most abortions conducted during the later stages of pregnancy were the result of severe fetal abnormalities that would probably would have led to the death or stillbirth of the child, perhaps even the death of the mother. These cases were extremely rare and typically occurred after several consultations between the woman and her doctor. As a community, we should embrace this common sense standards. Again, timing matters. The problem is that not all of the cases of these late-term abortions are due to uh, medical reasons. Many of them are just due to the woman deciding, hey, I'm not wanting this child. And I guess Melania Trump is totally fine with that, too. More than 90% of U.S. abortions occur at or before 13 week of gestation, according to the data from the CDC. Less than 1% of abortions take place at or after 21 weeks. But if you have millions of abortions being done, 1% of that, that's quite a, a large number. But it's actually more than that. These are the ones that are, are only reported. So the gruesomeness of late-term abortion is that you're actually killing a baby that could live outside the womb with no problem, without even heroic effort. On the campaign trail, Republicans have blatantly mischaracterized Democratic positions on abortion. No, they haven't. They have not. This is the thing. The fact checkers are wrong in that they're distorting the, the record. And I'll, I'll explain that. Last month, debating Kamala Harris, Donald Trump falsely said his opponent's vice presidential pick says that abortion in the ninth month is absolutely fine. Tim Waltz, who says execution after birth, execution, no longer abortion because the baby is born, is okay. He was fact-checked, it is not legal in any state to kill a baby after birth. Okay, let me fact-check the fact-checkers. While it may not technically be legal, the law turns its blind eye to these abortion clinics and abortion doctors, and if they botch an abortion and it doesn't work out the way they want and the baby doesn't die in the womb, they let the baby die on the table. And this is a practice that is taking place. And Tim Waltz in his state of Minnesota 
uh, changed a law which mandated that doctors try to save the baby if it's born after an abortion and it's still living. They Before Tim Waltz, it was mandated by law that they had to try to save the baby. Now, Tim Waltz and his Democrats got in and removed that law. And it's now not a legal requirement to save the baby after an abortion is botched. So yes, Trump is correct. And the fact checkers are lying. So the people who are claiming Trump is lying, they're lying. See how deep this goes? In response to news of Melania Trump's support for abortion rights, um, a spokesman for the harris Walls campaign said in a statement, sadly for the women across this country, Mrs. Trump's husband firmly disagrees with her and is the reason that more than one in three American women live under a Trump abortion ban that threatens the health, freedom, and their lives. Again, more fear-mongering. That is false. Most women live in places where they can already have an abortion and that Trump has not kept anyone from having an abortion. He has allowed the states to decide whether they want baby killing in their borders or not. But women who want an abortion, if they want one bad enough, can just leave the uh, states that have banned abortion and go to another state and kill their baby there. This is a barbaric act. It should be banned all over the place. It should be banned nationally. And these women, they can't get enough baby killing, and so they want everywhere baby killing, not just in the blue states. They want red states to have baby killing. Donald Trump has made it abundantly clear if he wins in November, he will ban abortion nationwide. That's a lie. That is a falsehood. He has said, how do you have to say this so many times? He has already stated, no, I will not initiate a a federal abortion ban. He said that. Now, as pro-lifers, we want him to. But he has decided that he's going to emphasize the states. Bring it back to the states. The states can ban abortion if it wants to. It can regulate abortion if it wants to at the state level. And he said, I'm not going to institute a abortion ban. And yet the Democrats and Waltz and Harris and all of the liberal leftists, they keep saying that uh, uh, that Uh, Trump will ban abortion, which is a falsehood, lie, deception. It's just a flat-out lie. Just like the Project 2025 is a flat-out lie. They keep threatening the people in this country. Oh, Trump is for this Project 2025. Trump had nothing to do with Project 2025. It's an outside conservative group, uh, drew up a document, of some of the goals that they would like to see. And Trump had nothing to do with it. He doesn't endorse it. (laughs) And yet they keep on repeating that. So um, the Democrats, I guess, have a new strategy, just lie, just flat out lie, even if it's been refuted and you don't fact check it. And and nobody in the liberal press fact checks it. And so now you have Melania Trump, you know, adding to the confusion, uh, bringing into the election a division right within her own household not supporting her husband this is a form of not supporting your husband this is a form of rebellion against your husband Um, there were other first ladies that had different views from their husbands and they didn't interject them into the election Melania has taken a different approach Donald Trump has made it abundantly clear if he wins. That's a lie. The Trump campaign did not immediately comment because they've already said over and over again, no, we're not for an abortion ban. On social media, Melania Trump doubled down, posting a short video in which she paraphrased remarks in her book. And I've seen this video. I'm not going to show it right now, but again, she doubles down. She has this controversial, contradictory... Uh, abortion position in her book and if that's not enough she makes a video that's on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and all of these social media sites she actually repeats the talking points of the pro-abortion lobby incredible 
On social media, Melania Trump doubled down. On the page, Melania issues a distinctively un-Trumpian appeal for empathy. Many women opt for abortions due to personal medical concerns. He writes, these situations with significant moral implications weigh heavily on the woman and her family and deserve our empathy. Consider, for example, the complexity inherent in the decision of whether the mother should risk her own life to give birth. Again, this has been refuted so many times because there really isn't a situation um, that is very common where the mother has to choose between the baby and her own life. Uh, And there really isn't any reason why the baby has to be killed. Uh, The birthing process, the baby is going to come out of the woman either way. And so why would you have to kill the baby first and then have the baby come out? Why can't you have the baby and then try to save the baby's life? Um, These talking points of the left have been refuted so many different times. And here Melania Trump is just mouthing, regurgitating the talking points of the left. Um, I feel bad for Donald Trump because here within his own household, he has a woman who doesn't love him enough to stay quiet, at least during an election. She has to be out there with the Democrats, with the liberals, with the leftists, with the pro-abortion group, fighting for the right of, of the mothers to kill their baby. Recent reporting has highlighted cases of women who have died in states where abortion has been banned. They, weren't banned, they, were, they didn't die because abortion was banned there. They died because they took abortion pills to have their abortion in their home and flush it down the toilet, and the pills caused them problems. So it's not the state that killed their baby. It was they killed their baby, and they got sick also because they were taking these pills to have an abortion. So... It's not the states that are to blame for the problems with these women. It's the medicine that they were taking. It's the medication that they were taking. She goes on to appeal for compassion. Compassion. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a weasel word. In this context, it's a weasel word. Compassion means you kill your baby. No. Compassion means you have compassion on the life, the baby's life in the womb. Of course, you have compassion for the woman. You want the baby and the woman to live. But what they say compassion means is you kill the baby and you don't talk about it at all. You just think about the woman. When confronted with an unexpected pregnancy, young women frequently experience feelings of isolation and significant stress. Yes, We can understand that. I, like most Americans, am in favor of the requirement that juveniles obtain parental consent before undergoing an abortion. I realize this may not always be possible. Our next generation must be provided with knowledge, security, safety, and solace, and the cultural stigma associated with abortion must be lifted, writes the former First Lady. Well, it doesn't make it any less wrong when a parent says it's okay. So she's putting too much emphasis on parental consent right now. See, yes, parental consent is important, but parental consent, when it's immoral, doesn't make something moral. So if the teenage daughter gets pregnant out of wedlock because she was sleeping around, okay, so now she has a baby, She is now a mother, and taking the life of that baby is murder, and she will be a murderer, and she'll have blood on her hands and guilt and for her sins. Going to her parents and saying, I'm in a bad situation, would you please let me have an abortion? That doesn't make it okay, just because she has parental consent. So, from a Christian perspective, from a moral perspective, from a decency perspective, 
Whether the parents say it's okay or not doesn't make it right. So Melania Trump is totally ripping apart Christian morality here. And she's latching on a phrase, parental consent, which conservatives usually are for because it usually involves something that the school is doing behind the back of the parents. She's latching on parental consent and trying to put all the moral weight on the parental consent. And it's no, parents cannot approve of something that's a crime and, and murder. It doesn't make it any better because they say it's okay. And then she says the cultural stigma associated with abortion must be lifted. No, it mustn't. It's good to have stigma over bad things. You know, the stigma of being a rapist, that, that's, a, that's a good stigma. To be a pedophile and have a stigma about that crime, that's a good stigma. And to murder your baby through abortion and have stigma about that, that's a good stigma. We want to discourage evil, sinful, criminal activity. We don't want to do away with that stigma. To, be, uh, to have out of wedlock birth, there's a stigma there that's healthy and good and right in a good society. You don't want to remove the stigma from out of birth uh, parenting, out of, out of wedlock parenting. You want to keep that because if you remove the stigma, then, then you'll get more of it. Now, you don't want to treat women who are pregnant harshly, but you want to leave the message that what they're doing is wrong and not to be continued. Finally, Melania Trump offers an expression of solidarity with protesters for reproductive rights. Again, a euphemism, reproductive rights. Women have the right to reproduce. That's not the issue. The issue is killing a baby. So, Melania Trump and every other woman has the right to reproduce. No one's blocking her from having a baby. What pro-life and moral people and decent people say is, you can reproduce all you want, you just can't kill your child, you can't kill your baby because that baby is a person made in the image of God. And that's something she totally ignores, just like all the other pro-abortion voices. The slogan, my body, my choice, is typically associated with women, activists, and those who align with the pro-choice side of the debate, she writes. But if you really think about it, my body, my choice, applies to both sides. A woman's right to make an independent decision involving her own body including the right to choose life, personal freedom. Yeah, you get to choose before there's a life. I, I wish these people would get this through their thick skull. Once the baby is conceived, it's a baby. Once a woman gets pregnant, she's a mother. Okay? She doesn't get to choose whether there's a baby or whether she's going to care for a baby, or whether she's going to have a baby once she has a baby. She can't choose because it's already a choice that's made. She's already decided to have sex. She's gotten pregnant. Now it's not a matter of her body, her choice. It's a matter of the baby and her. And there's a baby inside. So it's not just you. It's not just you selfishly um, making a choice about your body. Now there's another body involved. So Melania is really confusing the issue. And this is a terrible thing to happen, especially during, during the election year. Because... We need clarity on this issue, not confusion. And Melania Trump is bringing uh, confusion into the abortion debate. The abortion debate boils down to there is a human life within the mother 
and should the mother have the right to kill that human life? Should the mother have the right to kill that baby? Take that life. Does she have the right to take a human life? And the pro-abortion side says, well, we don't acknowledge that that is a human life. And the pro-life side says, well, then what is that? It's not animal life. It's not vegetable life. It's not mineral. It's a human. It has its own DNA. Um, the baby is developing just like babies always do. But they say, well, it's so small. It's like a clump of cells. Yeah, that's what a baby looks like when it's that small, when it's that early in its stage. That's what a baby is supposed to be. The baby in the womb is doing exactly what the baby in the womb should do at that point in its life. Just like a child after it's born and it's crying and it can't take care of itself, that's because the baby at that stage in its life development is not capable of taking care caring of itself. Should a woman be able to murder her born child one week after birth? Because she doesn't, she feels overwhelmed. She feels overpressured or she doesn't think she can financially afford the child. She's a single parent mother maybe. She didn't um, marry the father of her baby. And she's overwhelmed, so she takes it to the garbage heap and throws it in and kills it. Is that, should that be illegal? That's baby, that one week old baby that she threw into the garbage heap, that is just, that baby is helpless because that's the way babies are at one week. It's the same way in the womb. Uh, the baby one week before birth is helpless because that's the way babies are at that stage in development. And the same way with babies two months along. Uh, they're really small. And that's the way they're supposed to be at that stage in development. They're supposed to be really small. So the, the whole issue of size of the baby or the amount of development of the baby has really nothing to do with the humanity of the baby. And so that's why Melania Trump's uh, memoir and her argument for abortion is just pure foolishness. And, you know, we, a lot of us began to question whether re really she had that much of a intellect or she really had much of a intellectual side of her. And I have to say that her book and her thoughts on abortion are really not giving us much hope that she really is very deep. It seems like very superficial arguments. Uh, grab some talking points. It looks like Melania Trump is a very secular woman. Uh, sort of like the way Donald Trump was for most all of his adult life. Uh, maybe Donald Trump actually is just as secular as Melania. And maybe he just simply knows his voters. And he knows that if he wants to be a conservative candidate, he has to be at least in public conservative. But I have a feeling that Melania is simply expressing the way she has always believed and the way Donald Trump has always believed. And if you remember, there were times when he was being interviewed like 20, 30 years ago by television, and he was solidly pro-abortion at that time. So did he really change from pro-abortion to pro-life? You know, I went to see him in Washington. I went to the March for Life in January of 2020, and right before the pandemic. I mean, I'm talking right before the pandemic, January of 2020, before it actually hit hard. And Donald Trump was out at the March for Life uh, talking about pro-life issues and sounded just like one of us. Was he really? I don't know. 
All I know is Melania Trump, um, there's no question that she is not pro-life. And she is not a fr friend of the baby in the womb. And if you leave it up to her, and she has her way, uh, her husband's view, Donald Trump, uh, his work in helping reverse Roe v. Wade, she's against that. She doesn't believe in that. Um, and I said it in the last video, I'll say it again. Uh, it's really hard to believe that Melania Trump is actually going to vote for Donald Trump. It's hard to believe that she would actually um, contradict herself now since she's put this in print, her radical pro-abortion views in print. How could she vote for someone like Donald Trump who wants to curtail killing babies? Melania Trump is all in for killing babies. She thinks the woman's uh, concerns take precedent over everything. It's as if there is no baby in the womb. It's as if that's a blob of tissue in there and that the woman should have the right, total right, to remove that blob of tissue at any point. And there's no talk, no concern, no feeling, compassion, empathy for that baby, the child. And it really makes you wonder uh, about women who are like Melania Trump. It makes you wonder about her and similar women who are for abortion. Do you have compassion? You know, we're supposed to think that women feel deeply about children and babies and that they have a special compassion and empathy for feeling for the feelings of others. Well, where is that compassion? Where is that empathy in Melania Trump for the unborn, for these little babies? Helpless. I mean, think about a helpless baby. There is no more helpless than being in the womb of your mother and your mother's starting to think that maybe he wants to kill you. That is cruel. That is evil. That is mean. That is not compassionate. So we don't want to hear any talk about, you know, the compassionate thing to do um, at, in respect to abortion. There is no compassion in abortion. It is pure, raw power and immoral murder. And when women go to the abortion clinic, they are taking their baby to kill it at the hands of an abortion doctor. They are hiring an executioner. They're hiring a hitman for money to kill their own child. That is not compassionate. So Melania Trump, bad, bad, bad. And she's leading women astray and she's polluting the whole abortion debate. I have to say, I had nothing against Melania Trump before this, but I don't like her now. And she's not acting like a Christian, if she is one. Well, I hope that's been helpful. We'll see you back next week on another edition. God bless. Mm -hmm.